start using propulsion blocks. It's great as easy concept, and this video I'm going to cover why. So first of all, we're going to look at this drawn example I have down here. So let's just say that this down leg right here is an order block. Then price closes above the order block, and then price retests this area, and then creates another order block. So basically an order block of an order block. And this order block right here is a propulsion block. And when price retests that propulsion block, it should not touch the mean threshold. So the mean threshold is really a protected area that we want, don't, don't want to see get traded to. And price should also have a strong reaction when it touches a propulsion block. Now we're going to cover a candlestick example. So we see that these two consecutive downclass candles is an order block. And when price makes a close above the body, it validates it as a order block. Then we see price makes a retracement down into this order block and then takes off. And in the meantime, it also creates another order block. And what is this order block? It's a proportion block. So we don't call it an order block, we call it a proportion block. And a proportion block is basically a order block of an order block. So when price is respecting order block and then creates another one. Then we see price makes a retracement down into this order block and then makes a small mohawk through it and takes off, taking out buy side liquidity. And what do we also see about this proportion block? The mean threshold doesn't get traded to, which we want to see at a proportion block. So if you were to take a potential trade entry, you could either enter right when price touches the proportion block if you wanted to, then put your stop loss at the mean threshold, and then target the draw on liquidity. And that makes a great risk reward ratio. You could even just target internal range liquidity up here. But personally, if I were to take a trade entry off a proportion block, I would like to put my stop loss at the low. And then when price takes off, I could put my stop loss in the mean threshold or a break even. And you could also take a trade entry at this fairly gap, right within here. Put, put your stop loss at this low if you wanted to, or of course at the mean threshold, and then target the buy side liquidity. So we really use use proportion blocks as a potential trade entry, and then use the mean threshold as a stop loss. Now that we have covered what a proportion block could be used for, we can now look for more examples. Now for a bearish example, we see that price retraces up into this CB, which was within the OTE, which is another bonus. Then what is this high up here? The same intermediate term high, which gives another confirmation for lower prices. Then we see price created this order block with a CB within it, then price retests this area, respecting the SIBI and the order block, then moves lower, creating another order block. And this order block is now a proportion block. Then we see price makes it close below it, retest the area, and respect the mean threshold, where it doesn't trade up to the mean threshold. And then expands lower with a strong reaction, taking out sell side liquidity. So if we were to take a potential trade entry, if you wanted to at the proportion block, you could of course also take a trade entry at this order block, then we would enter at the low of it, put our stop loss if we wanted to at the mean threshold, but in this case I'm just going to put at this new intermediate term high up here. And then I'm going to target sell side liquidity all the way down here. And that will make a 6.1 risk reward ratio. So that's how we could trade this proportion block. Here for the next example, we can see that price created an intermediate term low because price respected this busy. Then after that price takes off, creating a order block. Then price makes a retracement down into this order block, also touching this small busy within here, creating another intermediate term low. And we could see that by price failing, to take out this intermediate term low, which creates a failure swing low, which means this intermediate term low is rebalanced, or the rebalanced way. And price did originally make an order block right here, but that got disrespected, and then creating another order block, which means this is a propulsion block. Then price makes a small retracement into the propulsion block, not taking out the mean threshold, which is a good thing, and then after that, expands higher taking up buy side liquidity. And we see we have that kind of, kind of fast reaction we which we wanted to see. So if we were to take a trade entry, 
get enter, plus dollars at this intermediate term low, and then target the buy side liquidity all the way up here, which make it 3.6R. So just to go over the trade again, we saw the price created the intermediate term low because price respects the busy. Then after that, price made a order block. It was these two consecutive down close candles. Then price made another order block, which is a proportion block, this one right here, and also intermediate term low as price respected this busy. And then after that, invalidated or disrespected the proportion block and making a failure swing low, failing to take out the intermediate term low. And after that, price made a new proportion block, which price then make a retracement down to, and then we get that fast momentum, which we wanted to see with a proportion block. And we also see that the mean threshold got respected, which pr means price doesn't retrace down into the mean threshold. Then we see price makes a small wick to the proportion block, fast momentum to the upside, taking out buy side liquidity.